Hello, welcome to this week's video, which is all about gratitude practice, but not just your standard kind of gratitude practice. We're gonna take a deep dive into exercises you could do to enhance your gratitude, and we're also going to look at some practical exercises that you could do if you are a little bit lost in how to get started. What to do with gratitude practice? What is gratitude practice? It is exactly as it says. It is giving thanks uttering thanks, putting it out there in the world for th things that you have in your life, things that you've done in your life. Um, these are like, uh, this moves on from kind of like self-affirmations. This is acknowledging some of the beauty around you and the beauty with and the beauty within yourself. It sounds a little bit woohoo and a lot of people uh, often are a bit reluctant, a bit resistant to starting it. But if you find yourself going through um, an awful lot of difficult things within your life. Gratitude practice can actually help shift you out of that. How does it do that? Well, it reframes experiences. Once we start seeing experiences as negative, we begin to kind of, uh, to quote the Rolling Stones, paint it black. Everything becomes to be, starts to become discolored by the negative spin we are putting on everything. What gratitude practice also does is it changes the brain architecture. It actually rewires um, or makes new connections, makes new neural connections. This has been proved, it's scientifically proved, it's been researched. You make new neuro, new, new, excuse me. You make fresh <laughs> neural connections and then you begin to layer upon those the more you do the gratitude practice. Now, there are several ways to do this. People find all sorts of different um, creative ways to do it. Some people speak to the moon. They have a conversation with Luna. Some people speak to the sun in the morning while they're having their cup of tea. Some people like to journal at the beginning of the day or the end of the day and literally write down what they are grateful for within their life. There are the obvious things such as I'm grateful for, and hopefully you have these, you know, a roof over my head, a bed to sleep in, maybe you have a partner, maybe you have children, um, maybe you have, and you also have food in your belly and a social circle of friends. If you don't, you can still do gratitude practice. People who have absolutely hit rock bottom have talked about how gratitude practice began to help them pull themselves out of the dark pit that they found themselves in because they were able to reframe the situation. Now, this is not turning something tragic or something difficult into and pretending it's easy or deluding oneself. This is actually noticing the very, very small things. Now, this kind of moves into a little bit of existentialism and finding meaning in your life. And if you want to look at, I, I mention him quite a bit, Viktor Frankl, he's got a book called Man's Search for Meaning, which he was an Auschwitz survivor. And he explains, uh, he's also a, he was also a psychiatrist, so he explains his kind of logotherapy and how that works and, and why meaning and purpose is very, very important, which it is. Um, and I think pretty much every school of thought now agrees and goes along those lines, and he wasn't the first person to discover this or, or kind of... Um, write about it and utilize this notion. But he survived Auschwitz and he found things to be grateful for. He found meaning and he found purpose. So it can be done even in the most adverse of conditions when all seems hopeless and lost. So, like I said, if you don't have those things, you, you, it's kind of moving into Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you do manage to achieve something like that, like you get some shelter for the night, giving gratitude for having that shelter for the night, as opposed to being bitter and resentful and looking at the whole big picture, and this is a massive mountain for me to climb to get myself out of this, zeroing it in, zooming in the focus a little bit, noticing the small things, even down to I had a butterfly land on me today, or somebody was kind to me today, somebody smiled today, um, I had a good feeling inside of myself today, all of these things, can help to reframe what you are going through and reframe your mind and change that perspective. It begins to remove that filter, if you like, that you're putting onto everything, that, that kind of dark colored filter where you're like, yeah, everything's just 
such hard work because you will actually overload yourself doing that. You can o overwhelm yourself quite quickly and you can begin to feel like you're trudging through mud, walking through a swamp, walking, trying to wade through quicksand because every day gets harder and harder because of the negative spin and the spiral that you're ending up wandering down and like I say, distorting reality with. So whether you decide to write a letter to the universe, talk to the moon, write a letter to yourself or write in a journal, you can begin with, if you're stuck, three things that you are grateful for, for the previous day or on the particular day that you're writing. As I said, it, they can be quite um, almost insignificant, but actually they're not insignificant because you have the beauty of life. You may notice that you helped someone in the street, they were very, very grateful. Someone helped you in the street and you know, rather than kind of, you know, let's say someone helps you repair a puncture on your car and you're stranded out on the road, rather than go, oh my God, I had this puncture in the car and then da da, and then this guy came along and they had to help me and all of that, you can go, you know, I had, I had a, a, a difficult situation to deal with and I was unable to deal with it and someone out of the kindness of their heart came along and helped me and asked me for nothing in return. This was a beautiful gesture. This was something to be grateful for. Someone saw you in distress and helped you. You know, it's easy to overlook it because of the negative situation that surrounds it because you ended up being late and this and that and the other and your hands were all covered in uh, rubbish and you know, you can look at it that way or you can reframe it into what actually happened, which was there was a positive encounter with somebody else. So find three things and journal about them. That is one tip to get you started. You could take that, that one step further. Let's say someone did reach out to you and gave you a bit of a hand with something, and it might be a family member or something, or you had a blissful moment with your child, your spouse, a friend, something like that. You can write them a letter. You don't have to send it to them, but you can write a letter down explaining what this did for you, what this meant for you. And what you're doing is as you're trying to figure out what it actually did, you're actually zooming your focus down in on yourself. You know, in that moment, I actually felt this, this, and this, which was better than how I was feeling previously, or it, the rest of my day turned out okay. So again, this is actually getting you to acknowledge it because we are geared to look at the negative. We are geared to look at danger. We are geared to look at cues. We are geared to look at threats. This reframes that and trains us to look for the positives as well. You can also actively go out and seek things to, in order to have gratitude for. So you can take a walk in nature, you can go and experience um, beautiful moments with other people, beautiful moments maybe with animals, take your dog for a walk. Uh, you can do meditation, you can do visualization, you can go and do some exercise. And again, around that, you know, I actually had the ability to make some time out for myself. I'm grateful that I made this time and went and did this. And then while I was doing this, this experience happened, that experience happened. You know, yeah, it was tough in the gym. Yeah, the hike was tough and it really hurt my knees and it tired me out and all the rest of it. But I saw this, I saw that, I got to switch off for a bit. So again, so again, paying gratitude for that. Give it, it, it's not about paying gratitude, it's not about that you owe something, it's about acknowledging it. Having that gratitude for that moment. Now, this one comes about quite a bit as well, is finding gratitude within negative situations. Now, depending on where you look in on the internet and within social media, there is a counter to that, as this is kind of like positive, no, hang on, toxic positivity, you know, shit happens. Yes, shit happens, bad things can happen to you. Um, you can go through a negative relationship, you can go through negative experiences, you can end up having negative behaviors yourself and doing harm to yourself. If you manage to progress through that, if you seek out help, if you had the ability, the courage, the bravery to step out and say, like, I need some help with this, or you manage to recover from a traumatic situation or a heartbreak or something like that, Again, this is gratitude that you actually got that far. That's one step. Then you can take it deeper. What did I learn from this experience? What did I gain from this experience? Did I gain more self-esteem? Am I able to see red flags more clearly? Am I not only able to see red flags, am I able to then act on that, whereas I didn't before, because when I saw red flags with someone, I just thought it was a carnival and jumped straight in with both feet. But hey, you know what? I've changed my life script. I've learned from this. And actually, you can take it even deeper than that, and this might take some time. What did I gain that was positive from this relationship? Not only was the 
was the teaching from a negative aspect of a situation? What was the teaching from a positive aspect? Because not all situations are 100% negative. Yes, there are some situations that are 100% negative, and if you manage to recover from them, that's where the gratitude is, that you had that ability, there was something inside you, you had that tenacity, you had that integrity. Look for those things and highlight them. They're gonna boost your self-esteem, they're gonna boost your serotonin levels, they're gonna boost your, boost your energy and shape your mind and shape your perception of the world in a more healthy way. And once that starts, then you get the snowball effect starting up. So even if it was a negative relationship overall, what were some of the positives? Well, you know, this person actually, despite everything that went on, actually showed me this or introduced me to those people or introduced me to this aspect of life, which I'm really, really grateful for actually, because if I hadn't met them, I probably would not have been into, I don't know, this new sport or this music or whatever it is that they might have actually brought to the table, which was positive, which was, growth inducing as well as the negative situation which they brought to the table which was growth inducing because it was an adversity that you had to uh, climb from and also if it is or overcome and also if it is an adversity that you created yourself or you know yes okay we can look at trauma and tragedy and stuff that stems from childhood dynamics let's take for instance addiction you know from, you know a, a negative childhood blah, 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 you have addiction but if you were managed to move yourself out of that, get some help. Again, I, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, but you know, be grateful that you had those characteristics, those attributes, they came from somewhere, they came from you. You may have been shown them by someone else, but you chose to use them, even if it was an unconscious choice. So, and you're still here and you're still living and breathing, which can be a very, very basic one, but actually one of the most powerful ones. You know, I'm, I'm here again for another day. Now, I know there's some people out there who at some points in their lives are like, oh, I'm here for another day again, whoop de do. How unfortunate is that? But believe me, it does change and they often change their outlook as well once things start to roll and snowball in a different direction because nothing lasts forever. Good times, bad times, everything flows, everything changes. You can also express your gratitude to others. You can, um, rather than walking away for a, from a situation, um, or if you notice someone is perhaps always pleased to see you, um, always happy to help, always happy to hear of your triumphs and your lows, you know, kind of always there for them. Maybe, again, you can write them a letter that you don't send to them, or you can send it to them, or you can actually express it to them directly. Now this doesn't have to be big gestures that they've done. These can be small things as well. And I'm going to move this into, there's a th I can't remember the guy who wrote it. There's a book called I Thou, I It, or I It, I Thou. And the idea is that often we treat not only ourselves, but we treat others as objects in our life. So for instance, the classic one is, the classic example is, I'm the customer, you're the shopkeeper. That's as far as it goes. Okay, so I come in, I I put my produce down that I'm buying from you, I give you some money, you take the money and give me the change and walk away, uh, I walk away, and here we have an I-it exchange. There is, the human connection has not really been acknowledged. You can also walk into the same shop, and again, it has to be authentic, it has to be congruent, but it's that kind of like, hey, how's your day? Uh, nice to see you again, oh cool, yeah, have you heard about this? Yeah, what are you doing later? Oh, I'm off to do this, oh cool, great, have a great time. Now. This is acting on a more I, thou. This is two people, and if it's you doing it, it will encourage the other person to do it. It's I'm meeting you as a human being with empathy. Now I'm connecting with you as opposed to just treating you like an object. And you can do this with yourself as well. Treat yourself as someone worth treating well as opposed to, and you can verbalize it as well. Hey, we had a really, you know, talking in the mirror. Hey, we had a really good day today. Yeah, you know, you did that thing, yeah, cool. So maybe have a conversation with yourself. It's not crazy, it's a way to process. Um, it shows also high functioning if you are able to kind of verbalize out loud with yourself and various facets of your psyche and acknowledge certain things to yourself. So maybe experiment with the I, changing the I it in certain areas of your life to the I thou and watch it come back to you. And again, this adds to the gratitude. It's slightly off to the side from gratitude, 
but it's another area where you can then notice it and give that gratitude. And it's not about groveling on the floor and I'm so grateful for this and I'm so grateful for that. It is acknowledging, like I've said in previous videos, acknowledging your achievements, acknowledging how far you've come, acknowledging the people that crossed your path that gave you more tools in order to move yourself forward. These are things that it's okay to gloss over, but it's way, way more healthy and way better and snowballs the effect if you actually acknowledge that, you know, actually, wow, you know, this person crossed my path and then this happened and then they introduced me to so-and-so and where I was there is not where I am now. I've, I've elevated, I've moved forward, you know, my business is starting to build. Um, you know, people have shown kindness, support, generosity when they didn't know me. I hope that helps. I hope you got something from that. And until next time, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios. <laughs>